right, cool. Let's uh, get going here. So welcome to Living on Chain. This is a weekly, I'm sorry, monthly uh, event where we invite on uh, external teams. Uh, in this case, today we, we have uh, Giorgios from the Gnosis Chain Bridges team, but in any event, um, we invite teams to come uh, give a demo, um, teams that are building on Gnosis Chain. So uh, this week we made an exciting announcement about the uh, Omni Bridge, and I want to just share that announcement right here with you in the chat for some context. Um, today we have Giorgios from the Gnosis Chain Bridges team, like I just mentioned. Uh, Giorgios is going to talk about Hashi. So. Uh, Hashi is also an important component of Gnosis Chain's commitment to trust-minimized bridges. Um, so the announcement on Monday was about the Sysync's uh, ZK Light Client integration on the Omni Bridge. Um, that's an important security upgrade. So you can read more about it uh, on that link there that I shared. And um, yeah, so for some context about Hashi, Hashi is an EVM hash oracle, oracle aggregator, excuse me, that's a tough one to say, <laughs> designed to facilitate a principled approach to cross-chain bridge security. With Hashi, users choose which combination of bridges to trust and how many um, must agree. So with that, I'll hand it over to Georgios. Georgios, if you can give yourself a quick uh, just introdu introduction and uh, you know what you do. Um, for Gnosis Chain, and then you can jump into the demo about Hashi. Sure, thanks, John. John. Um, so yeah, I'm mostly uh, leading initiatives uh, that have to do with uh, uh, with bridges in general in the Gnosis ecosystem. Uh, that includes the the native bridges, XI Bridge, Omni Bridge, AMB. Uh, but also collaborations with external bridges, third party bridges in general. The strategy of Gnosis around interoperability. And <clears throat> one of the main projects we have been uh, working the last couple of months, and we're looking forward to, to kick it off and uh, share it with the community uh, and, and build more on top of it is, is Hashi, which is the main uh, topic of, of the discussion today. Um, I would also like to start uh, by yeah giving you the whole context. So the, the whole roadmap uh, for, for bridges and interoperability, how it looks like, how we think, how we see the world, and how Hashi uh, fits into this vision. Um, John, can I share my screen or I guess? Yeah, go, go for it. You can share your screen. And if anyone has uh, questions for Giorgios, if you could save that for the end um, so Giorgios can, can present uninterrupted, that'd be great. I need to do some permission stuff. The the share screen button should be right next to your microphone uh, button, right in the oh, middle. I need to quit and reopen Discord. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, we can wait for you. I can I can play yeah. some music in the meantime, or we you know we can all chat. Give me a sec. Yeah, thanks. Any any uh, OGs out there? Any people from like uh, X Die days or how long uh, has everyone been a part of the Gnosis Chain community? Oh, I'm I'm back. I guess that was fast. Do you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Cool. Um, then I don't know if you interrupted anything. <laughs> no, go for it. Cool. I guess I can share that. Wait, no, no. Let me see. So cool. you, yeah, can you can see, see one see your screen. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so let's get this going. Um yeah, so as I mentioned, yeah, just want to briefly talk about uh, the, the, the roadmap. Um, so above you can see the stuff, uh, the, the current bridges, right? So, yeah, I mean, 
I just want to focus on the bigger picture here, not like mm -hmm. all the details, but here you can see that, uh, yeah, we have basically, yeah, we are right here today. So AMB with the telepathy validators is what mentioned just, uh, John just mentioned right before that. Um, and, and, and the black part is like the light clients um, that we are um, working to get, basically succinct labs develops mm -hmm. light clients, but this is a technology we're heavily um, using in both now the current bridges and also in Hashi. Uh, so there's a very close collaboration with this team. And here the orange part is basically Hashi, right? So um, the, the big picture here is that, um, uh, yeah, eventually we are almost in the end with what we're gonna do in the current bridges as we know them. Um, uh, and, and mostly we're gonna focus on Hashi. So uh, we're gonna have a testnet, devnet, and then a mainnet eventually. Uh, not, not. I mean, I hope like till September, um, uh, where we're gonna build new versions of different applications, including, including the open bridge or third-party integrations, uh, the safe, the the, uh, the multi-sig wallet. Um, on top of it, right? Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that we will. Uh, decommission, especially right away, the previous bridges by no means. Uh, but eventually, the plan that that's what I want to show here. Eventually, the plan is to to migrate to Hashi, right? Uh, because uh, as I'm going to show you later, the security it offers is um, yeah superior, and yeah, we need to uh, to move to a more secure infrastructure in general. Um, so this, yeah, this slide is was what was Omnibridge basically before, and what is now with the telepathy validator. Again, uh, here, uh, this is what, yeah, what we just announced this week, uh, and and basically shows uh, how we integrate this uh, light client technology uh, and combine it with what we had so far uh, to to have more secure bridges. Uh, so uh, the previous bridge was, I believe, uh, yeah, one of the most, uh, one of the simplest designs, but also one of the most secure ones. Uh, it has been live for several years without any security incidents, but uh, yeah, it relies on a, on a design of a off-chain relay, right? So n not one, basically multiple ones, we had seven. So imagine seven different entities uh, observing the Ethereum th side of the bridge, listening for specific events, uh, and each one of them separately uh, validating it, like yeah, separately listening it, and then separately, if they agree, uh, they sign that they agree basically on, on the Gnosis team of the bridge, right? So the, here the idea is like if four uh, out of seven agree on that, then a transaction uh, can be considered valid and then funds can be unlocked uh, like in the Omnibridge case or in general in the AMB case a message can be passed right so AMB is like a general uh, message passing uh, arbitrary message passing uh, as the AMB calls bridge and and the black part is what we just added now so as you can see like there are still off-chain components but they, they don't um, work on the same way um, they they basically the off-chain components they uh, uh, observe the Ethereum consensus uh, to update the light client on on the Gnosis chain side, and then there are smart contracts which yeah in a quite complex way um, validate the message via the light client. Uh, so we use as you can see here two different ways to validate a message. So it would be quite uh, quite tough to, um, uh, let's say, to, to, to have a security incident here because the, the Ethereum consensus is trustlessly validated. Um, yeah, basically here you, you just trust the Ethereum consensus and no like external party or external private key. Um, that said, yeah, I wanted to go a bit deeper into that because that would be very important in understanding what I'm gonna talk later about Hashi. And yeah, here is um, the Hashi, a high level architecture. So the main principle of Hashi, as John uh, said in the beginning, if we want to uh, describe it in one sentence, is a, a EVM, a, a Oracle uh, aggregator, right? 
So aggregator, I guess, yeah, you all know what it means. It is a concept. I mean, you apply it also in DEX, is DEX aggregator or whatever kind of aggregator. Um, here, what what we're doing is we say, okay, we have one bridge, the AMB bridge, for example. Then we have wormhole bridge. We have the telepathy light client, another light client, or layer zero. You can think of whatever bridge you want. Um, that basically send messages from one side to the other and the concept of Hasi is uh, we uh, want to ask all the bridges and light clients to transfer the same information uh, and then on the other side we we have some rules uh, to decide when this message is valid so for example uh, if we have yeah, I don't know, here in, in this example we have uh, five oracles. Um, if we say, if two of these oracles, or three or four, or even if we want to be super secure, we say five agree on, on a specific message, on a specific hash, uh, then we consider this valid. And here another important uh, concept that we introduce with Hasi is like we, we standardize on the hash level. So everything in Hasi, uh, in hash is hashes. That's, yeah. Uh, by the way, hashi be, uh, means also bridge uh, in Japanese. So, so yeah, uh, you can bridge any kind of hashes. In the beginning, uh, right now, we, we use just block hashes. So, like, we take the, the block number of Ethereum, we get this block hash, and then we bridge it over. But as you can see in this very generalized example of a token bridge, um, uh, you can transfer any message. So you basically hash a message. So a hash can be anything, right? Uh, you just, and then you just push it the same way you would push a block hash. So you can, you can use both. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Uh, what, what I want to show you afterwards is what we have now. So what you can experiment and use right now. And uh, yeah, since yesterday, we also have updated our docs. Uh, so if you go to um docs uh gnosis chain docs bridges you'll find a lot of information about hashi uh, so all all these contracts uh deployed contracts um are there um yeah so i just want to go through briefly this diagram um which is what we have now so we have a girly two gnosis chain testnet so like it's a one way one way bridge if you want to simplify it. So one way uh, to bridge information from Gurley to Gnosis Chain. We, we, can, we will do the, the other way around as well, Gnosis Chain to Gurley or whatever, Gurley to Optimism, whatever you want. But yeah, at the beginning, we, we start very simple. Um, we do have a second testnet, by the way, which is Gurley Chado. So yeah, but now I'm going to focus on, on the Gurley Gnosis Chain. Uh, why is that? Because as you can see here, we have four adapters. So the adapter, the examples that we mentioned before, so the architecture we mentioned before, we, yeah, we call them oracles. It's the same, same concept, by the way. Uh, four oracles, four adapters are, let's say, the technical name. Uh, what they basically do is like they accept uh, a hash from their uh, initial, from their um, let's say, fundamental security layer. Uh, what I mean by that is that they are independently calculating uh, the hash you're, uh, you're, you're asking for them. And that's why when we compare the output on, the, on this level on hash in Giribashi, which is the governance module, uh, we say, okay, if two out of four uh, give me the answer, the same answer, it means I'm super secure. Um, because that means that two of these oracles, two of these bridges need to be compromised. Uh, what are these four ones here? It's uh, the AMB, the, the, the usual one, the one, the one you know, the Gnosis AMB bridge. Um, another bridge is Sigma protocol, which is a new protocol that just launched, uh, I believe, last week. Uh, and it's a protocol I was contributing before. Um, so yeah, uh, this this fit qu quite well here. It's it's a very similar uh, architecture to to the AMB. The main difference is that uh, Sigma is like um, it, it's a lot more modular and can 
connect kind of many to many blockchains. So A and B is strictly between Ethereum and Gnosis Chain at the moment. So Gurley and Gnosis Chain or Shadow. Well, uh, whereas Sigma, similar to Wormhole Layer Zero, so uh, they, they, you can send messages from any chain to any chain. By the way, we'll have we have adapters also. If you look at the code base, we have also for Wormhole. Um, and in progress, we have for layer zero and seller. It's just, um, yeah, we didn't have the time yet to do the integration. And most probably on testnet, you don't need more than four. Um, so, yeah, we just stop here. Um, and apart from these two bridges, you, you can see we have two light clients. The telepathy light client is exactly the same light client I mentioned before. So, the one that we also use for, um, uh, for the AMB bridge. Um, and, uh, and Dendrit here is another light client, um, uh, another implementation. Why we do that? I mean, maybe everybody says, uh, okay, ZK light client, ZK bridge are the future. They're amazing tech. Yes, that is true, but it's also a super, uh, novel technology that has not been, uh, battle tested. And when a bug is found, it will be the similar, similar situations like we had before, right? All the bridges, Nomad and stuff, they have amazing design till, you know, they just broke uh, for whatever reason. So that's why we believe that the Hashi fundamental principles are super important going forward, because here we, we adopt, we, we have a, I believe, a very efficient way of adapting bleeding edge technology like this stuff are like super new uh, but also securing them with battle tested protocols like combining everything together we try to get the best of both worlds because honestly um although these two protocols are yeah super high like bleeding edge technology and have been audited by i don't know four different five teams uh they're not yet battle tested so i would not uh trust them yet just a single one of these just newly implemented light clients to secure 50 100 millions of, of tva like the gnosis bridges do here so that's why the concept of hash is like perfect for this and yeah and before going and showing you some uh, some contracts and some stuff on chain uh i want to um yeah, if you if you guys want to experiment, uh, what we've set up so far is we have kind of kind of a coordination. So the the main goal of the testnet is to to have basically all these four different um, uh, oracles adapters to coordinate on a specific block number on Gurley. Um, so every block number has a block hash. Uh, so every fifteen minutes, more or less. Why we do fifteen minutes? Because these zk light clients they need they need a finalized block header. So we always need to wait till, you know, the ZK proof is generated. You, you can see, yeah, a couple of the details here in the documentation. But long story short, every 15 minutes, you're going to have through Hashi a block header from Ethereum, which is validated by four different oracles. So it's like it cannot get more secure. And then your question would be then, what can I do with this block hash? Um, and yeah, this is what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm sure you some applications, but before that, yeah, let's, let's look some on-chain stuff. Um, yeah, subgraph. So yeah, we do have a couple of, I mean, I, yeah, a couple of subgraphs. Oh, I need to connect now. Oh, shit. Uh, error. Okay. Let me check. Uh, so Let me see if I can do it quickly. Yeah, all right. Yeah, quickly. Yeah, let's take one. Uh, so, yeah, these subgraphs are uh, useful for. Yeah, any applications that we'll build on top, uh, what they do is, uh, what this basically does, it says that the sigma, uh, I just picked the sigma uh, subgraph now, reported these block headers. So this is a, this is a girly block header. 
uh, with this block hash. And actually we can quickly verify that. You go to girly, uh, you look for a block. And then you get the hash uh, is like 5AA. 5AA. So you can see that this thing here uh, is correct. So that's, yeah, basically a simple test. Uh, I mean, why it's not? Oh, I have this in here. Yeah, it's this thing here, right? So we are trying through four different sources or four different oracles to, to get this hash. Uh, and that's what these subgraphs do. The subgraphs are, are very useful if you, yeah, if you want to build an application on top, like aggregating these and, and uh, any sort of ideas. We don't have any UIs yet or any front ends. Honestly, um, hash is more like kind of infrastructure focused. But yeah, we'll, or the community eventually will uh, start, uh, yeah, building uh, some some UIs, even simple ones. Uh, but yeah, that's that's one. Um, oh yeah, the adapter contract. So these are these are the adapter contracts. So uh, you can see what I'm re I'm referring to these things, right? So Dendrith, AMB, Telepathy, and Sigma, right? So all these uh, these Oracle adapters, they are contracts deployed in the Gnosis chain. So here you can see uh, every like 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, whatever uh, that happened um the the meet an event so it's the, the same thing that the subgraph uh, uh gets but yeah i just wanted to uh to show you what you can uh, get from the adapter contracts um then uh and then the most important ones which is hashi and so you i mean these fancy japanese names are uh yeah um ideas from orin um uh, which is yeah the the main contributor uh one of the other main contributors uh, in Hashi. Um, I'm not sure uh, what exactly means this in, in Japanese, but it has a name. I don't know if we have anyone that speaks Japanese in the audience. Uh, they're funny names. That's what I was told. Uh, in any case, uh, Hashi is a very, um, yeah, it's a very simple aggregator and show you Bashi or Giri Giri Bashi to different versions of the governance. So like of a way to um, um, to define the rules, right? And say, so the governance module will always say, oh, uh, these are the oracles I accept. Uh, like I accept these two live clients and these and this one. Um, I want to have a threshold of two out of four. Um, uh, I want to remove this adapter. I want to add this adapter, right? So that's the, the main concept. Uh, and then you might ask why we have two uh, governance modules. Uh, here comes yeah one of the secret sources I would call it. Uh, one is a very simple one. So the show you Basi that I'm going to show you here is a simple one, which can do exactly all the stuff I I just mentioned. Uh, the other governance module is uh, a bit more sophisticated, and uh, we we want to. We wanted to do that because we want to make trust uh, hash even more trustless. Why? Because if we have the simplified governance module, as I mentioned before, then as you can imagine, you have the security of four different oracles, but then you have a multisig that governs uh, the governance module because yeah, governance module should be governed some some kind of multisig that can basically destroy everything, like remove adapters and yeah, uh, yeah, basically change everything. So the, the other module, the Giribashi, uh, what it does is it's, a, it's implemented in a way that it can only initiate uh, the setup. And as long as there are no issues and you define what an issue means, the governance has no um, power, cannot change anything. Uh, an issue is, um, for example, an oracle it does not respond for defined amount of time. So if an oracle does not respond for um, two ep epochs, three epochs, or I don't know, two hours, um, you can remove it. Or an oracle uh, disagrees with the majority. It means that it's, it's, there is an issue, right? So then the governance can jump in. As long as the, there is no issue, so like all the, 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 the oracles behave uh, and operate as they're supposed to be, governance cannot do anything. And we believe that this is a very, very powerful concept. 
Um, so yeah, one last thing I wanted to show you is like, yeah, if you go to the governance, so this is the, the contract of the governance module again. Yeah, uh, this is Gnosis can. So um, here you can, uh, you can get the Oracle W. So here domain is five. So because I'm asking for girly, uh, the main ID of girly is five. Here I'm getting, I'm getting the addresses, are the addresses of the, of the adapters I, I shown before uh, of these four things right and yeah the most interesting part is actually here right uh i've i've set a threshold uh yeah threshold and count i believe for the main five it's two and four right so i have four adapters and i have a threshold of two which means if any uh two of the four agree uh then you give me the hash then you have an answer right and this is an example of a block that um, yeah I have a hash. If I get the next block, I get a zero. So zero means they uh, either nobody re, uh, reported that block or the, there was a disagreement or anything. So that means you, you cannot use this. Um, yeah, that that's it, I believe. Uh, yeah, here I have also the hash contract, but yeah, I don't think we have to go into more details. I, I think, um, I'm not sure how much time I got, John. It's it's informal. You can you know as long as you need, basically. All right, all right. Then uh, I think I'll yeah maybe that's that's enough for now for this stuff. I mean, if anyone has questions, we can go through later. I just want to to show you now building on Hashi because that's I think the second most interesting part now that you got an idea of the architecture. Um, so. These are the four, um, yeah, most obvious uh, applications, and actually we're working on these uh, with these teams uh, uh, towards that. So if you if you see, um, I mean, Connects and Hope are bridges are liquidity uh, uh, based bridges uh, that are already operating Gnosis, and they, it's it's a perfect fit for them to to go in a super secure infrastructure like Hash because they will still just transfer messages. From Ethereum to Gnosis, um, and these messages will just uh, tell them how to handle their liquidity. So um, that's that's a perfect fit here. Uh, Lifi is the, um, um, the 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 aggregator is one of the, also one of the most used uh, aggregator bridges on um, uh, on Gnosis chain, and not only actually uh, in the whole ecosystem. And they're of course super interested in you know as an as a as a bridge and dex aggregator to have also like kind of a um, security layer uh, aggregator like hash integrated. And the last one is the Unisor Foundation. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen there was the last couple of months a huge buzz in the Uniswap uh, bridge, right? And all the bridges. Um, like layer zero wormhole. I mean, in, in our case, by the way, uh, so Ethereum Gnosis chain, we have a uh, wormhole uh, to to facilitate the, the cross-chain Uniswap governance. So there was a huge discussion. Everyone was, you know, every bridge team was trying to, to showcase how amazing they are, how secure they are. And uh, there were a couple of uh, concepts in the end. Uh, one was called MMA, multi uh, I'm not sure what it means but some aggregator which is a concept similar to Hasi but a lot more um, a lot more simplified and very tailor made for for Uniswap governance and then it was Hashi was also back then Hashi was just a concept uh, we also proposed that and if you read the bridge assessment report of Uniswap foundation their bottom line is that yeah the best thing to do going forward and in the future is to use uh, one of the um, uh, aggregated security approaches with MMA and Hashi. So Hashi is considered here, and we're also in, in contact with the Uniswap Foundation. Uh, whenever Hashi is, is production ready, you know, audited, battle tested, deployed, and made it uh, to to be used for Uniswap governance. Uh, the next application, which is also uh, maybe it's a bit small, huh? uh, also like in progress is something super interesting uh, that you can do with Hashi uh, and the safe, the, 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 the famous uh, uh, wallet. 
Um, so what I'm trying to show here is like an idea uh, that you can, um, without paying, without doing any transaction on mainnet. So yeah, let's start simple. So here is Girly or Ethereum, and you have a safe there. Uh, and you have another safe on Gnosis Chain or any other network. Um, what you want to do is you want somehow control the remote safe, so like the ones from Gnosis Chain uh, from Ethereum, uh, but you don't want to pay the Ethereum fees, right? I mean, everyone, yeah, that that's that was the main reason that all the L2s and uh, L1s were created because Ethereum fees were super expensive. So nobody wants to pay fees. So here, um, and this is what I, show, I told you before, what can you do with the block headers? What can you do with the hashes? Uh, you can do magic things such as, um, yeah, hash is reporting basically the block header regularly. And then you can prove um, inside a block header, inside the hash, because yeah, the, it's it's uh, I get I get I guess we get a bit too uh, much in detail here, but it's a it's a huge rabbit hole. But uh, what yeah in a, in a Ethereum block hash you can uh, access the storage, so you can access you can prove um, that a specific um, um, storage slot storage on Ethereum had a specific value. So you can prove that this. Um, specific account 001 is um, owner of this account on the other side and long story short just with this proof so like by bridging the hashi br bridging the block header through hashi uh, and this proof here you can execute transactions on the other side without even touching ethereum and this is like a, sh uh, a proof of concept that yeah and a showcase that we, we are almost there uh, to show it to you, and that's uh, so. Here, of course, you can you can imagine same concept not only on Gnosis Chain but on uh, uh, on Polygon uh, or whatever EVM you you can imagine, uh, and that would be something very interesting for for the safe team as well. Uh, second example, and and this is partially the technology that is used for the previous example is Axiom. Axiom is a team that we are also working very uh, close together. And here's just a slide from, from them. Um, I, I, yeah, just to summarize what they do. Um, it's, um, yeah, basically a, a ZK proof again, uh, given a specific uh, block header, uh, you can prove um, um, specific facts, right? So they have, um, they have, as an example, uh, you can prove the ownership of a specific NFT on Ethereum on a specific time, right, in the past. So this is, by the way, not, not possible in Ethereum, right? I mean, uh, to, to, at the moment, uh, and specifically on chain, to, uh, out of the box, to prove that the specific uh, address was the owner of specific NFT at a specific point of time. You just know who owns this thing right now, right? Um, and with this with this uh, concept here, they call themselves ZK coprocessor for on-chain applications. If we combine this with Hashi, essentially what we get is we um, we get all this uh, zero knowledge proof uh, coprocessor on Gnosis chain or where, on wherever chain Hashi is deployed to perform computations there that are on-chain and. Uh, trustless completely you don't need to trust any kind of uh, um, indexer or off-chain component for that and i think this is very also very very powerful um last thing uh, or yeah uh, one more thing uh, that I, I believe also is very interesting which is also in progress is um cross-chain decentralized exchange um or cross-chain swapping, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, here, what we want to show is um, you can, through Hashi, you can, uh, and of course, through several adapters, you can see here we use we use different ones, uh, Accelerator, Zero, and, and Seller. Um, but of course, you can add any, any one you want. Uh, you can uh, report blocks from 
uh, different chains from Arbitrum, Optimus, Polygon, ZK Sync. Here you see a, lo a lot of different networks, uh, aggregating them, and again proving. Uh, so here the concept is that you prove that uh, um, a specific user has an in has like committed to an intent, so wants to buy a specific asset on a specific price and has committed collateral on a remote network right so again you're an arbitrum and you want to exchange um, uh, arbitrum eth to xdai for example then you uh, you you create a transaction and then there is a through the block hash you can prove that yes this guy has indeed um, locked this amount of ETH on this amount of contracts. So therefore, on the other side, you can release the XDAI and things like that. So it's this is quite complex. And I believe um, in a month or so, we're going to have the team that implements that presenting here. So yeah, and they're going to go a, a lot deeper. Uh, but yeah, that's also a very exciting application. And yeah, last uh, these are the last two slides I want to show you is uh, this go uh, even further in the future, like um, like what what can we use Hashi to um, yeah basically to to implement its whole uh, vision uh, with uh, it's it's a concept we call here Etherverse. Um, so yeah, uh, the main the main concept here is we we combine ideas from Cosmos, which is you know, the internet of uh, sovereign chains, I think, as, as they call themselves, uh, with the Ethereum technology, right? So we can, uh, why we don't have this yet is because, uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Cosmos. Cosmos has a con uh, um, the IBC, like interoperability protocol, which is considered one of the uh, most robust and trustless and secure designs. Uh, Interblockchain, uh, I believe, Interblockchain protocol. Um, so, um, so yeah, this IBC technology, um, we want to bring it to Ethereum, um, but yeah, instead of IBC, we have Hashi. Um, so we want to enable all this trustless and secure interoperability between EVM uh, chains using this concept. And here is like a... Um, um, yeah, an example how to do that. Uh, I mean, uh, conceptually. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop here. I believe. Yeah, that's that's about it. And uh, let's see if, uh, if there are any questions. Cool. Yeah, thank you so much, Georgios, for that um, super interesting demo. Um, and please look out for additional information that we'll publish over over the coming weeks about. Um, the Etherverse and you know how Gnosis Chain um, relates to Ethereum and how Gnosis Chain is is good for Ethereum ultimately. Um, yeah, so if there are, are any questions for Georgios right now, uh, th this is a great time to either unmute your mic or you can type the question in the chat and I'll be happy to read it for you. Thanks, John. And um, yeah, in the meantime, yeah, guys, please feel free to jump in the discussion. Um, I want to uh, yeah, ask you to, if you're interested in building uh, on top of Hashi, if you have ideas or if you're already using AMB, please, please reach out. Um, especially we just opened, a, I mean, not just, but we just started actively posting on a channel in this Discord called Hashi, and we really want to to get connected to uh, the community members that are they're having ideas, and especially when they're building something on top. Um, we want to, yeah, of course, help you in any way. Uh, we're funding um, also... Uh, Hash related products on hackathons and things like that. So, yeah, that's uh, I think uh, what I want to share. Um, if you are users, um, I think um, yeah, keep an eye out for. Uh, I believe 
yeah uh in september also in dapcon we will we'll have uh presentations and, and more showcases but uh yeah i think what i showed before about uh the safe module or some uh, kind of initial bridging concept i believe this stuff should come around september in dapcon so keep an eye out for this uh, you definitely have to try out and share feedback Oh, John, I just read your, your comment about show you, yeah. Uh, and the funny thing is like Giri Giri, uh, Bash, I mean, according to, um, to the fr to friend who suggested that, Giri means like almost, um, so like almost correct. And that was like a funny way to, um, to describe threshold. Because you're not like 100%, you're like almost correct, so yeah. That was the idea. Okay, looks like we don't have any questions. Oh, I, I actually, I have a, a quick question for you. So you briefly touched on the Etherverse and just like a basic question. Can, can Hashi connect other EVM chains with a beacon chain? So like, um, you know, Gnosis chain obviously has a beacon chain, so we're fully compatible with Ethereum. Or, or can Hashi connect uh, Gnosis Chain and Ethereum with just other general EVM chains that don't have a beacon chain? Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. Uh, yes, it can. And um, uh, I mean, with with a couple of um, not tricks but uh, caveats, I would say. So uh, let me share again. So it's basically this concept. I mean, I, I didn't want to talk about it uh, yeah, in detail because it's still kind of work in progress, but um, here is like uh, how we can use Hashi, uh, telepathy and all the light clients and basically all the oracles with Gnosis Chain to enable, um, to enable any other AVM chain to access Ethereum state in a very secure, trustless, and, and cheap way. Right? So what this describes here is like that uh, we bridge uh, through Hasi the state of Ethereum on Gnosis chain uh, regularly, every 15 minutes or whatever we want to decide. Um, and then, of course, we have Polygon Avalanche here. As we know, they're, they are EVM, but they're not Beacon chains. Uh, and then imagine Gnosis chain, you you can on Gnosis chain, like on chain, not something like off chain in some AWS server, perform computations that involve the state of Ethereum and the state of these guys here of Polygon and Avalanche together, right? And and perform computation, prove and do everything on chain. And this will, I believe, will unlock very very interesting applications, especially, especially the. Yeah, the trustlessness and security that uh, it brings on the table. I hope it partially answers your question, John. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we'll we'll have a chance to talk further, but I just, um, you know, for the purposes of the call. Yeah. Totally. Uh, yeah, we're coming up on forty-five minutes here, so if um, if there aren't any questions, we'll wrap it up here. Um, yeah, Georgios, thank you so much for, for your time and for that great demo. We've recorded this call, and we'll share it um, in a little bit here. So it looks like Niels maybe ha has a question. Just wait on that. Oh, no, thanks for sharing. Yeah, cool. So uh, we will see you all next month um, in, in August. Um, the Living on Chain call happens on the first Wednesday of each month. And uh, just look out for, for that announcement. We'll have uh, another guest on who will run through a demo. Uh, thanks again, Georgios, and thanks everyone for making the time. We will continue to publish um, you know, blog pieces and information about the Etherverse and Hashi. Uh, you know, there's a lot of components. So thank you, Georgios, for fitting it all together for us. And we will see you on chain. Thanks, everyone. It was a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Talk soon. Bye-bye.